Good day grade 12s. My name is Viola from the Distinction Bound Student. I'm excited to welcome you to Lesson 89 from the Distinction Bound Student textbook written by Cardin Madzokir. He has written economics textbooks for grades 10, 11, and 12 and published business studies books for grades 11 and 12. He is currently working on a grade 10 book for business studies. Please like and subscribe to our channel for more videos like this. Also hit the notification bell for you to get notified every time we post. Today's lesson is an introduction of the topic, Industrial Development Policies of South Africa. In Unit 1, we will look at the industrial sector of South Africa. Unit 2 will take us to regional development. Unit 3 is South Africa's endeavors and lastly Unit 4 will be the appropriateness of the industrial policies of South Africa. The previous lesson was a test and therefore no homework to kickstart this lesson so we dive straight into the lesson. In this lesson, we will look at two main things, that is the industrial sector in South Africa and integrated industrial development. An industry typically consists of the numerous enterprises that produce the same product, such as the manufacturing industry, the computer industry and the service industry, to name just a few. Industrial development on the other hand is the planning and building of new industries in the economy. Such development is guided by the industrial policy of the country. Let's now look at the industrial sector of South Africa. The South African government regulates the industrial sector in South Africa through the National Industrial Policy Framework, NIPF, and the Industrial Policy Action Plan, IPAP. The Department of Trade and Industry, DTI, is responsible for coordinating the action plans at all levels of the government. The South African government, in recognizing the importance of manufacturing in the economy, recently developed two new strategies to support its growth and competitiveness. The strategies that we developed are the National Research and Development Strategy, NRDS, and the Integrated Manufacturing Strategy, IMS. Please note that there are many policies and abbreviations in this topic. You have to be very good at remembering for you to perform well in the exam. I'll try my be to explain and make you understand. Let's now look at integrated industrial development, in which we will talk about cross-cutting issues, human resource development, competitive input sectors, prioritized growth sectors, best practices, the National Industrial Policy, the National Industrial Policy Framework, NIPF, and lastly the Industrial Policy Action Plan, IPAP. The Integrated Manufacturing Strategy, IMS, was launched in 2002 by the South African government. Remember I mentioned it earlier together with the National Research and Development Strategy, NRDS, as one on the two strategies launched to support growth and competitiveness of South African industries. The IMS is a strategy which applies to all processes that transform natural products into manufactured products. Do you think it's important for a country to be able to turn cotton plant into a t-shirt or sugarcane into sugar? What advantages could that country have over those that cannot? Let us know in the comments section down below. The IMS includes all associated processes, extending beyond the boundaries of what were traditionally considered to be industrial processes to include various related activities and services. This include the extraction of raw materials, purchasing of inputs, the production of intermediate goods, packaging, marketing, distribution and retail handling of the final product. That's handling a product from start to finish without any help from another country. Do you see the importance of the IMS? It makes our country more competitive globally and also self-sufficient. The government identified four measures to improve the business environment on a microeconomic level. These follow a sensible approach to assisting industries to grow by ensuring that cross-cutting service exists, with certain competitive input sector in place. Now we will look at cross-cutting issues, in which we will discuss infrastructure and access to finance. We will start off with infrastructure. In order for a country to be internationally competitive, it must have a modern infrastructure. The physical infrastructure must include modern modes of transport and efficient logistical services at harbors, airports and railway stations. The social infrastructure must include an education system that meets the demands of the economy and also offers work-related training programs. For industrial development, scientific, engineering and mathematical skills are of importance and should be promoted to ensure growth of the industry. With regards to access to finance, the government, through DTI allocates access to finance to the most productive activities. In South Africa, industrial development is hampered by a shortage of finance of small businesses. The government therefore created COLA enterprises to provide financial support through intermediaries, such as business partners. 
what would you manufacture if you had access to 5 million rands? Why do you think that's important in our country? Let us know in the comments section down below. I'll now explain Human Resource Development, HRD, under which I'll address technology. HRD focuses on post-school training. The country imports certain goods due to lack of adequate skills. That's where HRD comes into play. To try and address that problem. Why do you think it's important to manufacture our own goods? Employment is created locally, our currency will appreciate as other countries begin to buy from us, which in turn leads to the growth of our economy and better living standards. Who doesn't want to live good? Being able to eat what you want, drive what you want, stay where you want with the people you love. With poverty, all this might be impossible. You might not be able to eat what you want or be with the people you love. I'm getting emotional already. The government aims to help identify priority areas for skills development within value chains and to create strategies to work together with business. An important role was envisaged for the sector education and training authorities, CEDAs, in that they were created to advance the development of skills in South African employees who have completed school and are earning an income. There is a CEDA in every economic sector and the CEDA for manufacturing, engineering and related services is called MERCEDA which in full stands for Manufacturing, Engineering and Related Services Sector Education Training Authority. So this CEDA trains people in that particular sector. Research and technology is the lifeblood of technological development. A large focus area in this field is that of biotechnology. Technological development involves the discovery of new knowledge. In South Africa the government finances or subsidizes various research and development institutions, such as the Human Science Research Council, HRSC, the Council for Scientific and Industrial Research, CSIR, the Agricultural Research Council, ARC, Mining Technology, Mine Tech, and South Africa's National Research Organization. With regards to competitive input sectors, businesses rely on some key inputs of services that are provided by the government or private sector enterprises. The cost of these services also has an impact on the cost of production and therefore the prices and competitiveness. These include transport, telecommunications, and energy. On prioritized growth sector, the DTI focuses on the following sectors, export, tourism, agriculture, information and communication technology, ICT, and finally cultural industries. Broadly, the best practice in industrial development policies, from an international perspective, embodies three general principles namely, relying on markets, fiscal and monetary self-discipline and lastly global integration. Now let's look at the national industrial policy. South Africa has experienced a major shift in industrial policy since 1994 away from an inward-looking industrial policy towards an outward-looking industrial policy. An outward-looking policy is a strategy in which trade and industrial policies do not discriminate between production for the domestic market and production for the export market. The new policies that were put in place to restructure the economy focused on measures to support the production side of the economy to increase exports and to ensure redress of the economy of South Africa. Over to the National Industrial Policy Framework, NIPF. Government sets out its approach towards industrialization in the National Industrial Policy Framework, NIPF. The principles whereby it aimed to contribute towards government's goals for the future are as follows. To intensify the industrialization of the South African economy. To contribute to the industrial development of the African continent. To promote a broad-based industrial path. To promote a more labor-intensive industry. And lastly, to facilitate diversification of the economy. Lastly we will look at Industrial Policy Action Plan, IPAP. The industrial policy has been implemented by Industrial Policy Action Plan. The key plans of IPAP are defined within the following main sets of policies. Provide a stable and supportive macroeconomic environment. Provide a stable regulatory environment. Develop skills and education for industrialization. Improve traditional and modern infrastructure. And lastly improve innovation and technology. Finally, we get to our homework activity 79 on page 188. Question 1. Which institution is responsible for the export sectors, tourism, agriculture, information and communication technology, ICT, and lastly cultural industries? 2 marks. Question 2. What does the acronym IPAP stand for? 2 marks. Cardin spelled the word acronym wrong. Discuss reasons for industrial development. 8 marks. This has brought us to the end of the lesson. Don't forget to like and subscribe to our channel.
Also hit the notification bell for you to get notified every time we post new content to our channel. We are also giving away the Distinction Bound Student T-shirts to people who buy more than 10 books. At the moment we have the following textbooks, Economics Grade 10, 11 and 12 plus Business Studies Grades 11 and 12. We are looking forward to adding more books to our catalog. Remember our books come in two versions, Complete and No Answers versions. Complete versions have answers and No Answers versions do not. Thank you so much for your support. See you in the next video. God bless.